Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to start the beginning of my beginner tutorial series which will be hosted here on YouTube and also later when the course is finished on my platform violinshortcuts.com. For now let's start with the topic many beginner violinists struggle, especially adult violinists who are basically on their own for the first time and just want to try out a different hobby. And the topic is buying a violin. At first, let's talk about buying a violin online and what to look out for. Of course, you want to look out for decent pricing, but also you want to look out for accepted returns. So if you got sent a violin and if you are not satisfied with the violin sound or the build quality, that you have the option to send it back. So it's good to buy from a reputable business better than from a private person, especially on eBay. Be very careful from who you buy. A decent price range for a beginner violin nowadays is starting maybe at 150 euros and going up to maybe 600 euros. Usually you don't have to pay more than that. Of course, in that price range, the quality can vary a little bit and you have to be lucky to find a very good beginner violin for 150 euros, including a bow, bow rosin and a case. But sometimes that can happen. But I would recommend to you to look in the range between 200 and 300 euros. And in that range you will for sure find a good violin if you look out for the right things. And let me tell you now what things to look out for when you buy a new violin. First of all, what you can see in pictures is the quality of the bridge and the quality of the fingerboard of the violin. You can see if a bridge is built in low quality, if it is very thick, like this one. This is not my main violin, but this bridge is very thick and I have seen pictures of violins with even thicker bridges. You should not buy these instruments. A violin bridge is very thin because it is made of fairly hard wood. So if the bridge is made of thick wood, it means that the factory used low quality wood, which is very soft. And that's not what you want to have as a bridge. That's the first thing you can see on pictures sometimes. The second thing which you can look out for in pictures is the color of the fingerboard. It should be an even black color. There are some exceptions because the ebony wood, which the fingerboard is made of, can have some brown places from time to time. But you have to try to look out for, especially if it's a used violin, this place, if the violin's fingerboard in this place at the neck where we touch the violin, gets brown. That means that the fingerboard is not from real ebony wood. And that's a problem because ebony is very hard wood. So you can play years and years on the same fingerboard without it getting deteriorated. If you have a soft wood which is painted over with a black color, at first the color will, will go away and then the fingerboard will go away because the wood is of low quality. So look out for an even black color in the fingerboard. Another thing you can look out for if you have good pictures of the violin is the string height, which means how far is the string away from the fingerboard. And there are especially two points to really determine the height of the string, which is one at the end of the fingerboard and one at the beginning of the fingerboard. The string height must be adjusted very carefully on a violin and you can see good build quality if the string height is adjusted well and correctly. If the string height is too high, that could be a problem with the bridge height or with the nut. And of course you want your violin, especially as a beginner, adjusted correctly because if the string height is too high, it gets harder to play with the left hand until a point of it to, to be impossible to play. If the string height is too low, then when you pluck the string, you will get a buzzing sound on the fingerboard. Another thing which is important if you are a beginner is that you have four fine tuners attached right here. This violin has only one fine tuner, but you want to have a tailpiece with four fine tuners because as a beginner, 
you will want to tune your violin at first only with fine tuners. Therefore, you have to have fine tuners. And sometimes you can see and determine the quality of the violin also from the chin rest which is used. If the chin rest is from very low quality or very small, the possibility is that there are some other places as well where the factories saved money on the violin in the build quality. Of course, you have to watch if you have good pictures for cracks in the wood. But we will come to things later which you look out for when you open the case for the first time. Another thing which you can see in pictures sometimes is symmetry. The violin should always be very symmetrical. That means that the bridge position is in the middle between the F-holes and the space on the left and the right side of the fingerboard is very equal. Also, the tailpiece should align with the direction of the strings. Let's now come to points which you can just check when you hold the violin in your hands. And for the reason that we can just check some things when we hold the violin in our hands, it's very important that you order a violin from a shop which also accepts returns. Because usually if you buy a violin in that price range, like a beginner violin, there will be some things which they saved money on. And if you are lucky, that are things which are not so important for you at first. But if you are unlucky, you have to go to a violin maker and adjust those things or even buy new parts. So in that case, you have to make a calculation what is cheaper, sending the violin back and getting a better a new one for maybe a better price also, or fixing the violin you just bought. In my experience, there is always a good reason to go to a violin maker, a luthier, to check a violin through if you have the possibility. Even if you buy a violin new, doesn't mean that the setup is in the best possible condition. Doing a checkup from a professional violin maker who has seen hundreds and hundreds of violins in their life and they know exactly the measurements to take and how to adjust things like the bridge height or the bridge shape as well, they can make these small adjustments fairly cheap. But I hope for you that there are not some major adjustments to be made. When you first get your violin, you of course want to open the case and familiarize yourself with the equipment as best as possible. Usually you should have a bow as well and also bow resin coming with the violin. The first thing I would check is if the strings are under tension. I don't mean the strings should be in tune, but under tension. If the strings are under tension, you don't have to worry about the bridge falling. If the strings have no tension or some strings have no tension, you have to be very careful and adjust them so that they are roughly under tension, but not too much tension so that they don't break. I have two videos here on YouTube about tuning a violin. One is for beginners, one is for advanced players. You might want to watch those two because if you buy a violin new, you might have to adjust at the pegs. And I covered that topic, tuning with the pegs, in the video about advanced tuning or tuning for professionals. <laughs> Second thing to check is the bridge position. And we want to have the back of the bridge, the side which is going in the direction of the tailpiece to be in a 90 degree angle to the top of the violin. Looking from the top, you want the bridge to be aligned between those small corners in the F holes in the middle between that. And also you want to check at the right and the left side of the fingerboard if the bridge is centered. Another thing you want to look out for is the chin rest. Because the chin rest has to sustain sometimes a lot of pressure, you want the chin rest to be very firmly attached to the violin. Check if the chin rest is movable. If it moves, you have to be lucky to have the adjustment tool in your violin case. And if not, you have to go to a violin maker and tell him to fasten the chin rest properly on your violin. Also, you have to keep in mind that the chin rest should not touch the tail piece, because that will also lead to a buzz. Also, of course, you want to check if the bow is in good condition. The first thing I do when I check a bow is I look if it's straight. So I look along the stick of the bow 
and see if the bow has any curves in it. You want the stick of the bow to be very straight and aligned with the hair. To tension the bow, you have to adjust this screw right here and turn it clockwise and you will see the hair moving away from the stick and increasing in tension. You want to be able to approximately stick your little finger here between the hair and the wood of the bow stick. Also, you can take this rule of thumb. The distance between the hair and the stick of the bow should be equally to the thickness of the bow stick. But you can adjust the tension of your bow according to your playing style and also to the quality of your bow. Always when we don't use our bow, we loose the tension on the screw right here until the hair is loose. And we can see the separate hairs right here. The hair has to be a little bit loose when you put the stick back into your violin case. And always when we play, we put a little bit of tension on the hair. If you have tightened the bow and the bow is new, usually what you have to apply is the bow resin, which looks usually some kind of like this. They can come in different colors, but what they have in common is that we have to apply that with a little bit of pressure to our bow. Let me show you a little trick right there. If you don't want to damage your violin resin, you put your thumb here a little bit over the metal and then you don't have to worry about damaging your bow resin with the metal of the bow right here. Because if we don't protect the bow right there with the thumb, it can damage the resin quite badly. So put your thumb in front of that and then with a little bit of pressure, apply the resin to the bow. And if you have a really new bow, which hasn't seen a violin resin yet, you have to apply really, really much. So you have to go like this. Notice the sound. It's a lot of pressure I use. And then again like this and do that for maybe a minute or so if you have no resin before on the bow. You can also see that the hair of the bow gets white at the places where I apply the resin. So if you have some brown hair places, chances are that there's not enough resin applied yet. So the next step would be that we check the tuning of our instrument with plucking the strings. I've already made a video about that and I will link it in the description as well. And also I will link a checklist for the things to look out for when you buy a new violin and when you first look at it. In the end, it's best to have a violin maker look through your instrument. Most of them do it for free to just check your instrument. But if there's a repair to be made, which is most likely with every instrument you buy online, a small repair, it can be 20 euros, it can be up to 100 euros if you are unlucky, then they will repair it and usually also get the small things fixed in the process. So the position of the bridge, a violin maker will adjust that in a matter of seconds. So this was the first part of my beginner tutorial series. In the next part, I will go through the basic maintenance and handling of the violin. And after that, we will go into playing position, bow hold, and also reading notes and playing tunes, of course. So see you in the next video. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye bye.